Hey, what's up? Welcome back. This 2020 Ranger's been kicking my butt. I don't have the vehicle with me, it's at work, I'm at home. We're gonna use my Ranger as a reference so I can tell you what I was doing and what I found out. Ranger comes in and it's running like crap. You can see, literally see the engine shaking like this. 36,973 miles. This guy stays on top of his oil changes and his maintenance. He's really good about that. I get the computer. I get a code P0299 turbo under boost. I get a code P0304 cylinder four misfire. So there's a TSB. Let's diagnose the misfire first and then we'll worry about the turbo. P0304 303, 302, 301, there is a TSB. And what you do is pull the coil, look down inside there, see if there's water. If there is, you blow the water out, I think you change the spark plugs or in the coil or whatever, and then you put an engine appearance cover on it. See, there's no engine appearance cover. You put an engine appearance cover on it, and that keeps the water from getting down inside there. Pulled cylinder number four. No water down in there. Pulled them all, no water down in there. All right, let me swap coil number four and coil number two. Swap them, go inside, clear the code, and see if the misfire moves the cylinder number two. Maybe I got a bad coil. Misfire came right back, cylinder number four, it, almost immediately. Okay, so it's not a coil. Next step. Go pull the spark plugs. No, I didn't pull the spark plugs. I did a relative compression check. No, I did pull the spark plug first. Pull the spark plug out of number four. It is coated in oil. It, it is caked in oil. It's fouled out. All right, now I do the relative compression check. Basically what you do is you use the computer, turn the key in the on position, hold the gas all the way to the floor like you're doing flood mode, and it tells you to do that for, I think it's 30 seconds and it's doing the compression check with a computer. Cylinder number four was at 9%. That's not good. Everything else was in the green. So I'm like, all right, all right, let me do an actual compression check with the little tool that you screw down inside there. Do that. I do cylinder number two. Cylinder number two is at 150 PSI. Okay, it's just so I have something to compare to. Go to number four. 30 PSI. There's where my turbo under boost is coming from. Because the turbo, which is down here in this behemoth of a mess, down there, is actually forcing air through. Okay. There ain't no compression, so it's not working right. Bore scope. I get the bore scope. And the bore scope I can actually use, and I can push a button, and I can flip it you know, 90 degrees or whatever and look at different angles. As soon as I stick it down in the hole, the piston has got white ding marks all over the top of it. And I'm like, well, that's not good. Flip the camera around and look at the valves and everything. Those same white ding marks are on the bottom of the head. And there's a piece of metal literally embedded in between the valve and it's embedded in the head and the valve's not closing all the way. Where did that piece of metal come from? That's the question. We can't make out what it is. So I got two senior master techs standing next to me while we're looking at a bore scope and all three of us at the same time saw it and all three of us were like, what is that? That's not supposed to be there. Still don't know where it came from. Still don't know what it is. So I had to file a um, parts cost or whatever through Ford and they were gonna tell me if they want me to rebuild it or send me a long block. Well, they're sending me a long block. They're sending me a turbo, an intake, and all that stuff, and a couple other one-time used parts. Like, you know, this is a one-time used part. You have to cut it off, especially if it's under warranty. This fuel line right here is a one-time used part. You know, obviously, the gaskets, the fuel injectors, the O-rings, and all that stuff. And I think it comes with spark plugs in it. I'm not quite sure, but basically, they're sending me a long block engine. I want to know what piece of metal that is and where it came from because there's nothing on top and it's down inside the cylinder 
So the only way it could get there is through a spark plug hole, or maybe, if I'm not mistaken, I think when the other senior master looked at it, it looked like a little piece of the piston had a hole in it. So maybe something, that vehicle did run hot. That's the one that I did the timing cover on that blew the fan out. But I didn't have the spark plugs out of it. I didn't mess with anything back there. I double checked, you know, when I had the valve cover off, if I had something in, in the top there, it wouldn't have made it down inside there into the combustion chamber. So even the senior master was like, that's nothing that you did because when it first came in, we couldn't test drive it. So maybe that concern was there before the fan clutch ever blew out. That's what we're thinking. But it wasn't making any noise or anything when I test drove it for 37 miles. So we're still confused. You know, we, we looked at it, all the bolts were accounted for that are supposed to be there. Everything's put together the way it's supposed to be. There's nothing that I did. And it doesn't even look like a piece of metal of anything that I took apart. There's nothing back there that's the same color. It's almost the same color as the piston actually, because it's all burnt up now, but just really confused on what it is. And hopefully when I get the engine out and get the new one, get the engine out, maybe I'll have time to pull the head off of it and see. Maybe not because I'm gonna have to send it back forward for a core. Um, just very interesting. The more information I find out on it, I'll let you know. But I just wanted to use my truck for a reference what I did so cylinder one cylinder two cylinder three cylinder four this is the one that's has no compression it's only 30 psi compared to 150 150 and 150 I don't know you guys tell me what do you think it could be I appreciate it I love you guys I'll see you on the next one